In this video, we're going to take a look at a series of 2K NL hands played by Jarrett Man, who is a high staked reg that uses a very theoretical approach. Of course, he doesn't replicate GTO perfectly because no one can, but I want you guys to pay special attention to how he crafts his own personal nuanced intricate strategies that are grounded in game theory principles. And in particular, how he uses limiting factors such as card removal, kickers, and randomization to differentiate between similar combos. This helps with keeping his range balanced and disguised, making him very difficult to play against. Alright, on 85 I think we will throw in the check raise. I think that, um, I think that pocket 4s and pocket 5s will get in here low frequency. Uh, they are low frequency though. And then this is a really good turn for my range. A lot of my range is concentrated around the 4-5 region, which he doesn't have as much of. And I do think that we're going to be overbetting here. Um, with pocket fours as well, I believe. There might be some blocking with like, let's say you called with ace five pre-flop and now on the turn it's just maybe you do have some incentive to bet, but you, um, what's the right word here? You have the incentive to bet, but you don't want to bet for a larger size. I'm just going to play over better check. So the queen of clubs here, if he had that hand and he was going to bluff, um, if he had the queen of clubs in his hand, he was way more likely to bet the flopper turn. So by the river, uh, where, where he's allowed to bluff everything in this spot also, uh, we just have a very clear call um, with my hand, I believe, as he's not going to be bluffing very often with a hand that has the queen of clubs in, in the way that the board ran out and the way that the action went. I don't see that checking back flop and checking back turn very often, especially not as often as the other types of queens. So if we were gonna split our queen time calls in the river, having the queen of clubs is strictly better than not having the queen of clubs. Like, name one bluff that he could have with the queen of clubs by the river. He'd have to check back the flop with queen jack because king queen's not gonna bet the river. Uh, we, do have, we do have a small check raising range here, but we do a lot of check calling with our trips, I believe. This hand will mix, and on a 39 I will call, I believe. We do beat, a, we do beat his other 5x, which leads us more towards raising, maybe more than calling. I expect over better check from him or like pot sizer check. This is fine too. Um, I imagine on, the, on a 97, if you plug this into a computer, it would probably even raise. Um, building a raising range on the turn here makes some sense. We do check call some 5x. However, I think that, I think that even having no raising range is 
somewhat reasonable on the turn. And once we check call the flop and we face the polar strategy on the turn, um, it gets a little bit thin. And we just have easy call. Table one is a high frequency betting board. However, there is there is still a significant checking range and I think it is necessary to split here. I'm not gonna be betting one third with range. This hand is very strong with the nine of club side card. Um, and just queen nine being a very strong hand in this spot anyways. Um, borderline able to overbet, I would say. I think with the nine of clubs, we want to overbet less than if we had queen nine of hearts, for example. Uh, I'm gonna go with the check. I do think there is splitting on the on the turn here. Hands like you know pocket jacks, a ten. Some of these hands like I have um, want to bet one third or smaller, like at least for a smaller size. Uh, but there's a significant portion that wants to overbet. And over better check is a very reasonable strategy, I think. And on the river, I'm gonna play one third, two thirds, and this hand always wants to two thirds, or three fourths, whatever, I can't do math. Uh, low frequency four bet, uh, high frequency call. Cut off versus small blind with jacks. We would four bet the call off, of course. I think we'll actually raise this flop. I think we 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 have to build a small raising range around my hand. Um, so we'll raise some stuff like uh, king queen. Queen Jack, Jack 10 even, you know, stuff like that. Um, although he bets a third, versus a third, I'm gonna play no raises. I was expecting a larger bet, to be honest, and I think the larger he bets here, the more we get to raise. Um, yeah, my hand's still very, very strong. You know, we, we both turned some Queen X, so it's lowered the value of my hand, of course, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. My hand is still incredibly strong. I wonder if he splits here. Okay, so he goes for this like half pot size, which I like. I like if he's using a half pot size with his entire range, basically. <laughs> it's a good card for him. He can still have tens and nines in this line, I think. Uh, that's a very bad card, however. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna shove range and more of his range isn't chops than mine is. So I double block the queen. I double block queen jack suited. So that leans me more towards calling for the chop, I think. However, oh man, this is really close. Okay, so which chops do we wanna call? Do we have to call chops in this spot? We do have queen x, we do have a little tiny bit of like 8x, but not much. We have like 10% of kings that didn't 4-bet free. Other than that, um, we're just all chops. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that one. I think, so here's what I was thinking, right? I was thinking, okay, we double block the queen, which is nice. You know, we double block queen jack suited. He doesn't have queen jack off, so. Those are strict combos of hands we lose to. However, we, even though he's allowed to bluff everything, because of the way preflop ranges 
are. He has more hands with the jack that are going to be chops, aka bluffs in this spot, than he does with another hand. So I would rather call the river with a hand like pocket sevens as a chop um, than I would with pocket jacks, I think. Just because naturally he has, you know, ace jack off, king jack suited, jack 10 suited, low frequency jack nine suited, uh, all hands that potentially can take this line and just naturally I end up blocking more of the chop. So jacks would be a fold is what I was thinking. And I think that's more important than blocking two combos of queen jack suited. Because in this case, like we would rather unblock the hands so you can have that, that chop. But we definitely have to call a portion of our range. It's just, you know, calling it in a good way is important, I think. On 74 we'll call. This one will actually get folded versus 2.5 under the gun. A uh, significant amount of the time, pre-flop. Rear versus button, I think raising this hand is pretty reasonable. Um, versus under the gun, it becomes less so. And again, if he had bet really, really big on the flop, I think leading this, even this turn, could potentially make some sense. At least leading like an eight or a nine or a five makes some sense. But after he bets a third, I, like the, the alarm bells in my head for, you know, is this a leading spot kind of go away. He goes for half pot, which I actually like as a size. Um, I think he's supposed to have a lot of over pairs and I think my hand is just very strong. It's really weird now on this river, not gonna lie. Um, I think I like checking. I think I really like checking this river with this hand. Um, we block his check backs a lot. I think he's. He's not really supposed to bet any over pairs, but that's fine. Very, very easy all in, of course. Pray for the no pocket jacks. Oh man, brutal. What is this game, man? What is this game? Now you may be wondering why a high stakes reg would put his strategy on YouTube with his scream name for all the world to see. Well, the reality is that if you play a sound theoretical based game, it doesn't matter if your opponent knows your exact strategy because it will be impervious to exploit. That's the beauty of playing in a well-balanced, disguised manner. No matter your opponent's style, if he's unable to execute a GTO strategy with the same precision, he'll end up losing to you over the long run. So that's the video for today. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay balanced.